<laughs> Run out of ideas, Bob. You run out of shirts. <laughs> I'm not doing. Do they just send you these? These companies or what? I mean, I, you got to ask Riley. Okay. <laughs> we'll ask Riley later. <laughs> I'm sure everyone wants all. Hopefully, you did. Basically, you go player of the week third, third time you got this this year. You're the only player to get it three times this year. Uh, game tomorrow night, number ten, Auburn. Uh, you know, obviously played pretty good basketball, uh, you know, especially the second part of, uh, of the game at Alabama and, and uh, have a big test Tuesday night playing against a really talented team that's extremely well coached and, and plays really, really hard. Thoughts on um, on Mason being SEC Player of the Week again for third time? That's obviously pr pretty impressive. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Um, he's had such a great year, and uh, you know, it really started this summer. I mean, when I think about him at six in the morning getting shots up, um, you know, not, the whole team didn't get up and shoot at six in the morning. I mean, he uh, he was a guy that was very consistent in his approach. And I think all of his hard work is, is why he's had such a jump from maybe where he was last year. Um, the versatility to, that he's added to his game, uh, not just a spot-up shooter, but his ability to create off the dribble, his ability to be a point forward now. Um, he plays point guard as the game kind of goes on. Um, each night he kind of starts off at the four and morphs into our point guard. So he's... he's uh, you know, it's awesome when a guy works hard and then and then and then his game elevates, which is what's happened with Mason. Yeah, they came out and brought Reggie Cheney's game. It looks like he had, uh, I think, 11 rebounds against Alabama. What do you think of that? I thought his second half rebounding is is just what we needed. Uh, I thought he rebounded in traffic, Pete. I thought he range rebound. I thought there were some really really good things that uh, that he did on the glass. All conference play, he's been really, really good finishing around the rim. Um, and, and then it was probably his best uh, defensive job uh, when we've gone to our switching game plan. He did a great job of walling up, uh, going vertical, um, kept Kyra Lewis in front of him, which I, you know, I think is as hard a guy in the league to keep in front of you. And I thought he did a phenomenal job. Um, you know, again, defensively and on the defensive backboards. Start to the season with, I guess, the suspension and then a couple of bad games. But how encouraging is it to see him coming along like he is? Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that, you know, gets shots up early uh, before practice. He's um, had a really good attitude. I mean, I guess the thing that I've been most impressed with is just, you know, his attitude throughout the entire season, he's, you know, I'm sure there's a, there's been several games that he wished he would have played more or had more of a role, and uh, he hadn't let it affect his attitude at all. I mean, he just comes in and works, and, um, you know, we need him to, to, to play big for us, for sure. How important is it to kind of get Adriel going so you kind of have that one-two punch with those guys where you don't have a drop-off because you have to, to make a move? Yeah, I mean, Adriel was, you know, he, he he played so well, you know, early in the year, and, and uh, we need him to get back to that, uh, you know, spot where he was, where he's providing a ton of energy um, the entire time he's on the floor, not just in spurts. Um, you know, Adriel's got a unique personality in our locker room because he's, he's, he's a guy that's bubbly. He's a guy that attracts, you know, good vibes. Um, and so when he's playing well, I think it – it, it, you know, his attitude becomes infectious in a positive way. Um, certainly, we'd like both those guys to uh, play well together. But we are a different offensive team when they're together. We're, we're not as, you know, whatever, we're, we're not as cosmetically pleasing um, when they're both in there. Yeah, Coach, according to the some analytics I've seen, I think, eight, I think Mason is, I think, top 10 in the country and fouls drawn per 40 minutes. Just what makes him? so good at getting into the lane, drawing contact, getting free throws attempted? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I think that, you know, with any player, you know, you want, you know, obviously you want guys that, that can get, can shoot the ball from the perimeter, but then you want guys that can, you know, can draw fouls. That's so important. And, uh, 
he's his ball handling, you know, he can go left, he can go right, he can shoot the mid-range, he can get all the way to the rim and finish. He's just a versatile guy. I mean, we've seen teams try to go big on him. We've seen teams try to go small on him. Um, and he's found a way to score the ball regardless of who's kind of been on him for the most part. And um, certainly drawing free throws helps a team in so many ways. Probably the, the general fan doesn't understand when, when, you, when you draw free throws attempted, it helps your defense because the other team's not playing um, in the flow of the game and your defense can get set. And, uh, you know, Mason's got the creativeness and, and the ability to, um, you know, to draw free throws just because he's, he's, he can be an unorthodox as well when he, when he puts the ball on the deck. Eric, uh, Auburn moves up to number 11 in the AP poll after beating Kentucky and uh, coming back last week at Ole Miss. Kind of what, what's your thoughts about the opportunity? Because you got to play one ranked team, Kentucky, you know, tough game, didn't quite turn your way. This is another big opportunity for you. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you, you know, you play a team that's, um, you know, top 15 in the country. Uh, always a great opportunity. Um, playing them at home is a great opportunity. Having said that, I mean, they're, they're ranked 11th for a reason because they're really, really good. They're really long. Um, they're really experienced. You know, when you start looking at their roster, obviously, they lost a lot last year off a great team. Um, and Coach Pearl does a great job. You know, he's intense for an entire 40 minutes, and his team kind of takes on his personality. Um, but they're old, too. I mean, they got, they got some guys that, 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 that are, you know, have experience on their roster. And then they have a freshman that's just been incredible. You know, Curl's done such a great job for them. Defensively, he's a really good defender. Uh, he does a great job of getting to the basket off dribble drives. Uh, and then they're, they're an awesome offensive rebounding team as well. And they draw fouls. I mean, you look at the 44 free throws they took against Kentucky. That's a pretty big number. Yeah, I mean, looking at the free throws, how, how concerning. Of course, that was their place. You know, they might not get those calls here or, you know, on the road in general. Well, but what, what do you guys have to do to not put them on the line a whole lot? Yeah, I mean, I think we just we got to be who we are defensively. Um, you know, it's not like we're going to come out and play a zone. Or, I mean, we're gonna, we're, we have to do what we work on every day and what we've been working on since – since the summer, and uh, you know, I don't believe in having 12 different defenses. I don't. I don't think you can be really good if you if you try to do 12 different things. And um, look, people know how we're going to defend. They know, you know, we're going to play man to man defense, and we're going to aggressively guard the three point line, and and we're going to fly around and and try to get defensive rebounds. But um, you know, I think you know we don't want to take away our aggressiveness either. How is Isaiah Joe's knee doing? It looked like he was really limping on him on Saturday. Yeah, he's going to be day to day probably for you know two to three weeks, um, and that's that's what it's going to be. You know, he'll he'll just he'll be day to day, and if he's able to play whenever that is over the course of the next two weeks, great. And when he's not able to play, um, we just need people to step up like they did against TCU. I mean, how important is it to have him back? I mean, I think for, you know, with our roster, whether it's, you know, Reggie, Adrian, like we need a full roster. We're, we're not a deep team. And so, um, you know, but, but just as we saw in TCU, when, when a player goes down or is not able to play, then somebody else gets opportunities. And, and um, you know, so I, I mean, we just got to go day by day and see, see, see where we stand and see what our roster looks like. Isaiah, do you think about just shutting him down for a couple of weeks and seeing how that'll do, or is that just not a good option? Yeah, I mean, it's I, I don't I'm not a I don't want Mark O'Neill to give me out of bounds plays. Um, don't want him to give me defensive schemes on how to play Auburn, and I'm not going to tell him anything about medical. I don't know anything about. I know my back sore right now, and that's all I know medically. I can't I can't I can't comment or talk about any of our guys. I mean, if Somebody's got a head cold. I don't. I don't know what that does to a player's en energy. If a guy's got a bad ankle, I mean, it's kind of up to Mark. You know, when Desi went down, I just say, "Is he ready or not?" That's all. I. That's that's. You know. 
on his knee to see if there's something. Yeah, they they did want to. So it's just, it's just the inflammation stuff. Yeah, again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then on Adriel, you know, he started every game. I know he hadn't been playing as well. Do you just feel like, hey, you know, make a lineup change? And you know, he's an older guy. He's been playing well. How how did Adriel handle that? Yeah, I think that. Uh, I think all our guys want to play. You know, if you're used to starting and then you don't, I, I mean, I don't want to to have a player be, oh, that's great, I'm not going to start. That's cool, coach. Like, I want a guy to want his minutes, so to speak. Um, but having said that, um, every decision that we make is just based on what's best for the team. That's it. Who gets a shot after a timeout, what's best for the team. Uh, who starts, what's best for the team. So, um, you know, but he's he's had a great year, and I think, you know, he didn't get many minutes last game, and, you know, we won the game, and you just move on, and then the next game's got its own new identity and new theme, and, you know, whoever played well at Bama doesn't mean they're going to play well against Auburn. Whoever didn't play well or whoever didn't get a lot of minutes, that doesn't mean that's how it's going to be against Auburn because every game, like I said, has got different matchups and different needs. And um, so, <laughs> when you go back and look at the slow start you've had the last couple of games, is there a, anything you can kind of pinpoint about why you've started slow? I, I know you've responded, but just the slow starts and, and maybe trying to change anything up there. Yeah, no, I mean, I'd rather not call two quick timeouts. Um, but, you know, sometimes, whatever, like, you know, you miss three shots and, and, and you screw up two defensive assignments and you're all of a sudden down 6-0. And you come down and miss another three and they go down and get a layup. Now you're down 8-0. Um, just got to get quality shots, too. You know, it's, it's sometimes, you, you know, you're going to miss an open shot, but you can't force shots to start a game, you just can't do it, especially on the road and especially against a team that can. Re I mean, Auburn. I mean, Alabama scores against everybody. I mean, they're Alabama can score the ball. Um, you know, I'd rather play well down the stretch though, than get out to a 12-0 lead and lose. Going back to Mason, his craftiness. Does he remind you of, of, of maybe a former player that you've coached at Nevada, or maybe beyond? I, I don't think so. I think. I mean, he's just. Uh, you know, like we never thought he was going to be like a point guard type player for us. Like watching the film and stuff, I, like I didn't think that he was going to, you know, be able to handle the ball in pick and rolls. And he got a few chances early and then he, he did well. And then, you know, one or two pick and rolls in one of our earlier games turns into him handling the ball five or six times in pick and roll to then him handling the ball in pick and roll 20 times, you know. and But he's earned it, you know. it's not It's not like we – opened the season against Rice and said that, that Mason's going to be a point forward and we're going to run a lot of middle pick and roll and wing pick and rolls with him. He's, he's created, you know, his own role um, through us experimenting like you always do as a new coach. And, and um, some experiments fail. And the Mason Jones with the ball in his hand experiment has not failed. It's been successful. And, it's, again, it's a lot of it has to do, most of it has to do with all the work that he put in in the offseason. I guess a few years ago when, when, when you were playing, you played uh, Auburn in the NCAA tournament. What, what do you remember about that? And I, I guess there's a video of you hitting the, hitting the big shot. Yes, please go to YouTube. Okay. 1987 Hoosier Dome. Um, if you go to that clip, they did not guard me. I, I have the audio. I don't. Uh, my buddy who put that out many years ago, I think he took the audio off because he liked me because the announcer said that Auburn's game plan was not to guard me um, when I came in, and they are playing a triangle, too, and there's no one within 100 feet of me. So I had two open shots and made one out of two, and then my coach Egan yanked me. We lost. Why would a coach take you out when you're 50%? I asked myself that for the last 20 some years. I have no idea. Bad coaching. Was that kind of a thrill? I know you know you weren't a star, but you know. Oh yeah. Three in, an in the Hoosier Dome in front of 50,000 people or whatever. Indiana played right after us. Um, we ended up losing. I 
I think by two or three, but we had a, our, the starting point guard got the ball caught on his hip and made a layup and they called traveling and that was a game. I, if the coach would have left me in, I would have shot at three instead of trying to go to the cup and maybe we would have won. And then, you know, you've talked a lot about the big crowd you guys had on Tuesday night, 6 o'clock, uh, and the same as Saturday at 3 or whatever. But what kind of crowd are you expecting? Because I think people, you know, they're behind this team, and you guys just had a big road win, and the Auburn's coming in, and just kind of what are you expecting from the crowd and the atmosphere? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, any time you play like a top 15 team in the, in the country, like you can kind of feel the excitement in the air. Um, and, you know, I think that, you know, our building, our, our fans are really smart. They have high basketball IQ. And I think that they enjoy watching this team play because of the effort that, they, that, that, that the guys are given. Um, again, I think that, like, it's kind of our job to create the excitement because those are the performers on the floor. The guys have to – we have to play well to, to get a home court advantage. If, if you don't play well, it's, it's – it, it doesn't help much, you know. I mean, you, you got to play well, and, and uh, you know, hopefully we we put 40 minutes together, and we'll see. Yep, really good coach. Um, sweats a lot during the game, um, but you know, you you just think about Coach Pearl's record wherever he's been. He wins, and he wins at a high level, and it's because his teams play really hard. And he's a great X and O coach. Um, you know, I've studied, like, the you know, in the past, he's had great baseline out-of-bounds defense. And he just – there's little things that maybe the general fan doesn't pick up on about his teams. Um, but, you know, I, they get their scores, the ball in the right spots, and, and uh, I think he's one of the best coaches in the country. Or a polo. <laughs>